That is a clangor. And that is another clangor. Did you hear that, Carol? I do. Do you I'm know what that was? About my weather forecast. Was it the clangers? <laughs> it was the clangers. <laughs> you remember them, Carol? I do. Remember the soup dragon? The soup dragon, my favourite character. Carol, those were the days. Yes. Sometimes I think the clangers sound like that's what I hear when I hear your forecast. I knew you were going to say that, <laughs> Mega. <Nigga. laughs> I thought that's why it was being played at the end of my <laughs> it forecast. It was Charlie's idea to play it. Stay not watching now, Carol, if you want to know more about the clangers. Thank you. I think she is. I don't know. I don't, she will. She uh, this is the whole programme. The whistling voices of the clangers were enjoyed by millions of children in the 70s, but long-time fans of the show have often pondered the real meaning behind the language they use. So, after more than 60 years, we may finally understand what exactly those knitted mouse-like animals were saying. Lucy Bloodev explains. That is a clangor. And that is another clangor. They seem to have a piece of rope. With a distinctive sound and rather cheeky personalities, you can see why the clangers became such a firm favourite. And now they seem to be having a bit of an argument about their piece of rope. The creation of Oliver Postgate and Peter Furman, it shared the tales of creatures living on a star far, far away. And it was a labour of love. In the age before green screens and special effects, many of the episodes were shot using trial and error. And perhaps unexpectedly, there were also scripts. Yes, including all the hoots and whistles, which Oliver's son Daniel is now trying to protect. People always used to wonder about what the clangers were actually saying on the TV show. And because um, they were always written out in, in, in English, um, and that's what my dad used to, uh, to whistle from. So they were actually saying things to each other. Now, thanks to crowdfunding, a special book is set to be made, including those stories, as well as analysis and anecdotes. Now the work starts, really. I'm going to have to uh, put my money, but put my mouth where the money is, and uh, or rather, sort of start typing away, really, and uh, and um, and 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 getting getting deeply involved in what it's all about. Meanwhile, the future looks bright. With a special exhibition in Canterbury and potential demand for more new series, it's hoped the magic of these friendly little creatures is there for generations to come. Lucy Vladov, BBC News. I'll take you back. Yes, I also find it quite calming, the, the noises they made.